Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how to make my daisy zipper bag. I'm going to have a pattern for the drawstring version of this bag if you're interested, which will be available in the links below. But without further ado, let's get into the material you'll need. I'll show how to do the lining and the crochet bag all in this tutorial. For this tutorial, you'll need some medium weight yarn. I use Line Brand 24-7 cotton yarn, a four millimeter crochet hook, scissors, and a stitch marker. We're gonna start by making a magic circle. And then you're going to chain three, and this will be your first double crochet. And then you'll work 11 more double crochets into the circle for a total of 12 double crochets around. Once you've completed all of your double crochets, you're just going to slip stitch and do the top of the chain 3 double crochet from the beginning of the round to join. And then just fasten off. Pull up a loop of your next color into any of the double crochet stitches around. Chain four, and this will be your first triple crochet of your petal. Work two more triple crochets into that same stitch that you just attached to. Now to complete your first petal, remove your loop off your hook and then insert your hook into the top of the chain four, aka your first triple crochet. And then you're gonna pull that loop through that first stitch to complete the petal. And then chain two. You'll now start your next petal, so work three triple crochets into the next stitch. So once again, you remove that loop from your hook and then you'll insert it into the top of the first triple crochet and then pull that loop through, and then chain two. Repeat this process until the end of the round for a total of 12 petals. Chain two after your last petal, just slip stitch into the top of the first petal to join. And then fasten off. Go ahead and make 13 more of those for a total of 14 daisies. Into any of the chain two spaces around, attach your next color. Chain three, and this will be your first double crochet and then work two more double crochets into that same space.
the next space will be the corner so start by making three triple crochets into that space chain three and then work three more triple crochets into that space to complete your corner into the next space work three double crochets and then you'll work three more double crochets into the next space the next space will be your next corner so three triple crochets chain two three triple crochets like your last corner So you'll just repeat this process for the end of the round. So three double crochet, three double crochet, and then the corner, three double crochet, three double crochet, corner, etc. I'll show a diagram quickly so you can reference that if you need some more clarity on this part. Work your last three double crochets into that last space here and then slip stitch into the top of the first stitch to join. So from here we're not going to fasten off because there's one more round that we're going to do. Before we continue with this round it's worth noting that the way I will be showing how to attach is by attaching as you go while completing round four so for the first square it will just be normal but for the following squares I will be showing how to attach as you go obviously entirely optional you can make all the squares first and then attach them at the end but that's just how I'm gonna show it but anyways back to round four for this square so we're gonna start with a chain two which will be your first half double crochet and then you will work five half double crochets until the first corner space Once you get to the first corner space, you're going to do two half double crochets, chain two, and then two more half double crochets into that space to complete your corner. And now to continue on, I skip the first stitch after the corner and then I do 11 half double crochets across until the next corner. And then we're going to work the corner again, so two half double crochet, chain two, two half double crochet. And then you'll continue to work 11 half double crochets in between each corner. I'll insert a diagram to further clarify this. You'll work five half double crochets after the last corner and then slip stitch into the top of the first stitch to join and then fasten off. First square is complete, so from here on out I'll be showing how to attach as you go while completing round four. 
Before we begin, here is a diagram of the layout of how the squares all come together. So you can use this to reference if you want to attach your squares in a different way or if it just makes it easier to follow along as attaching as you go. For your next daisy, you're just going to work up until you finish round three. Once you finish round three, we're gonna start connecting round four. So you're going to chain two, and then work five half double crochets to the corner like you did before. Once you get to the corner, you're just going to do two half double crochets like normal, and then chain one for half of your corner to be complete, and then we will start attaching to the other square. You're gonna start by aligning your corner with the bottom left corner of your first square, if you're left-handed, this will be the opposite, so you would be aligning to the bottom right corner of your first square. So you're gonna start by removing that loop off of your hook, and then you'll insert the hook into the bottom left corner of your first square, and then you'll pull that loop through, chain one, half double crochet back into your current square, and then remove the loop again and insert into the first half double crochet of your other square. And then you would work your second half double crochet into your current square to complete that corner. Again, you would remove your loop off your hook, insert into the next stitch on square number one, pull it through, and then like you were doing before, you're gonna skip that first stitch after the corner, and then you'll continue to attach into each corresponding stitch until the next corner. So in short, you're basically doing the same thing that you were doing before while completing round four. It's just the only difference is that in between each stitch, you're removing your loop and inserting it into the corresponding stitch on the other square to attach it as you go. It can kind of be confusing at first, but it's my favorite way to attach because it saves you from having to do it at the end. I kind of think of it as a puzzle as I'm going, and then once you get the hang of it, it becomes a lot faster and easier. So keep attaching this way until you get to right before your first corner. Once you get to the corner, you'll just do your first half double crochet into the corner as you were doing before. Remove that loop from your hook, insert into the corner stitch of your other square, and then pull that loop through and then half double crochet into that corner again to complete your first half of your corner and then chain one, remove loop, insert into the corner of the other square and then pull that loop through, chain one and then do your two half double crochets to complete that corner and then you're just gonna continue round four as you were doing before. Once you get back to the beginning of the round, you're just going to fasten off and those are your first two squares completed. So you're going to start square three as you did square two and this will be the same for the remaining squares. So you'll do your five half double crochets into the corner space and then two half double crochet chain one to start off. You're going to rotate your already attached squares vertically and then align that current square to the bottom left corner of those squares and then you're going to attach the same way up until that center seam. So to quickly reiterate, you would remove your loop from your hook, put it into the corner space and then pull that loop through, chain one and then finish off your corner and then just continue to connect into each corresponding stitch until the following corner. So 
So do your first half double crochet into that corner space, attach it to the other square, second half double crochet into that corner space, chain one, and then you're going to remove your loop again, and then this time you're going to insert your hook into the center chains of the two previous attached squares. So I'll show you what I mean now. Pull the loop through as usual and then you'll chain one and complete the corner of your current square and then continue round four as per usual. So now you have three attached squares and then you're just going to place your fourth square into that little empty space. Starting by aligning the corners again, and then you're just going to do the exact same thing. Once you attach up that seam up to the center and you've connected those first two corner stitches, you're just going to chain one as usual and then attach into the center where those three previous squares meet. And then you're just going to attach down the following side and then continue round four as usual. So now four squares have been attached and then five and six will be attached the exact same way that three and four were. So if you need more clarity on that, you can go back to see how three and four are attached. So begin making your seventh square up until that first corner on round four. This is going to be your first side square, so this square is going to start making the bag take its shape. So you'll start by attaching the seventh square to the middle square, as I'm doing right now. Now that you've attached down that middle square, I'm just going to attach into the seam as usual. So now this is where it kind of changes a bit so that your bag will start to take its shape. So you're going to start connecting your next side to the base of the square. So your current square that you're working on is the side and then those two bottom pieces right here are going to be the base. So you're going to connect down that seam as I'm showing here. Once you've attached that side square to the base, you're just going to continue round four as usual. You're going to attach your following square in the placement that I'm showcasing right now, in this little L shape here. So you'll start by attaching to the corner of the previously attached square, aka the first side square. And then you're going to begin to attach the following side of your square to the bottom of your bag, aka the base. Okay. 
once you've reached the center seam of the bag, you're just going to continue round four on this square as usual. And then your following square is going to fill in this gap. So continue to attach around as I'm showing here. To round off your bottom, you're just going to attach your following square following these three squares like so, just like the other side. And this is what it should look like once that square is attached. At this point, you have four more squares to attach. These last four squares will be attached relatively similar as the last four squares, so you can reference that part of the video. But yeah, I'll quickly show through those squares being attached. Once you've attached your last square, don't fasten off, leave your yarn where it is. If you attach in a different way, then you can attach into the middle of one of the side squares, aka the 8 stitch from the left, 8 stitch from the right, so just pull up a loop. This doesn't really necessarily matter, but that's just where I'm starting from. I'll be working in continuous rounds, so you're going to start with a single crochet into the first stitch along the top from where you have attached and then I'm going to place a stitch marker into that first stitch. So work six more single crochets until that first corner space. And then you'll single crochet into the first corner space and then into the seam of the two connected corner spaces and then into the next corner space. You'll then skip the first half double crochet after the corners as normal and then just continue single crocheting along the top as so. Continue to single crochet along the top back to your stitch marker. You're going to continue to single crochet around the top until round five. So for four more rounds at this point. So once you have finished all five rounds of single crochet along the top, I'm just going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the round, aka the stitch where the stitch marker is. So I'm just going to slip stitch into that stitch and then I'm going to fasten off and then weave in those leftover ends and then from this point 
we'll start the lining with the zipper and then we'll attach the strap at the end. What you'll need for the lining portion of this tutorial is fabric. I use cotton, your bag minus the strap, and then scissors. I also use shears, but those are totally optional. A 16 inch all purpose coil zipper. Zippers with metal teeth or plastic teeth won't work for the way I show in this tutorial. A pencil, measuring tape, sewing pins, and then an iron. And then depending on how you're sewing, you'll need a sewing machine or a sewing needle. So I'm just gonna start by folding my fabric like this and I'll keep the fold of the fabric towards the bottom. So now I'm just gonna place my bag onto the fabric with the fold of the fabric aligning to the bottom of your bag. Make sure there's about a half an inch of a seam alliance on the side and then the top as well. Now to make this easier, you could just trace around the bag leaving a half an inch, but I'm gonna show how to do box corners for it. But yeah, you could just trace around the edge and then just sew following that line. But back to the box corner version, I'm just going to draw a line on the other side of the bag, leaving about a half an inch of an allowance. And I'm just gonna draw that line right straight down to the bottom. So just begin to cut your fabric out like so. Once I'm done cutting my fabric out, I just decided to use my shears to cut the top edge of my fabric just to reduce fraying, just cutting very little off, but this is totally optional, you don't have to do this. I'm just going to iron my fabric now. You can do this before you start cutting your fabric, but this is just the way I did it this time around. It's at this point that I would add a pocket, but I'm not going to show that again in this tutorial, but if you're interested in learning how to do that, I have it in both my previous two lining tutorials, so you can check those out if you're interested. Before sewing the sides of the bag lining together, we're going to actually attach the zipper. So to do that, you're going to take the side with the slider towards the left, and then you're going to attach the top part of that zipper to the inside of your bag, and I'll show you what I mean now. So you're going to align your zipper to the top of your bag like this, leaving about a quarter of an inch of an allowance on your fabric above your zipper. So I'm just going to bring my bag and align it so there's the half an inch of an allowance on either side, and then I'm going to use that as a guiding point to know where to put the slider of my zipper. I align the slider part to the edge of my bag at the top. So now I'm just going to pin the top side of my zipper across my bag. So you're going to sew along the top of your zipper, but you're going to leave half an inch of a seam allowance on either side of your zipper, and that will be when you're attaching the sides of your bag together. Before I start sewing, I'm just going to change my sewing machine setting to this one so that the needle will be closer to the coil of my zipper. And I use a stitch length and tension of three. If hand sewing, you can use a back stitch. And then this is what it will look like. If you lift your zipper up, you can see that nice seam under there. 
and this is the side you will see when you attach your lining to your bag. And now to attach the other side. So you're just going to fold your bag back in half like this and then you're going to attach the other side of your zipper to the other side of your lining. You'll be again attaching to the inside of the lining to create that nice seam. So I'm just going to align the unattached side of the zipper to the other side of the lining like this, leaving a quarter of an inch of an allowance like you did on the other side. So you're just going to pin that side into place to get ready for sewing. So you'll start sewing from the opposite side that you did last time and you're going to leave half an inch of an allowance on either side like you did before. And I just unzip my zipper when I sew across the side, I just find it's easier this way. Now both sides of the zipper have been attached to the lining Before we go any further, we're going to trim the end of the zipper But first you're going to sew a line across to become its new stopper. I'll show you that now So I'll just place my zipper in my sewing machine like this and I'll align it to the edge of my fabric and then I'll just sew along the zipper going back and forth a few times just to knot it into place. Make sure not to sew over the fabric, you're just sewing over the zipper at this point. And then just cut that excess zipper off. As an added step, I'll just zigzag across the edge of the zipper. With my zipper zipped up, I'm just going to place my bag back onto the lining like this. And you're just going to keep the allowance on either side as we've talked about before. And then you're just going to pin along the edge following your bag and instead of following the bag at the bottom, you're just going to continue to square it off. Now you're going to sew down each side following those pins. Make sure to not sew over the zipper, you're just sewing along the fabric. If easier, you can unzip the zipper, whatever works for you. It's worth noting that I have changed my sewing machine back to the regular straight stitch setting. You can now see that your lining is starting to come along. As an optional step, I like to use my shears to trim the edges of my lining. This just helps reduce fraying. You can also use the zigzag stitch if you do not have shears. So we're now going to start building the box corner. So just set your lining aside for a minute and we're going to measure the base of our bag which is these two bottom granny squares. So the width of my base is four inches and then the length is eight inches. This may be different for you depending on your tension. Now back to your lining. So with your bag laying flat like this, you're gonna pick it up, rotate it towards the side so you can see both of your seams like this. With your bag open, pick one of your side seams, follow the seam down, and then flatten it out like this so that it creates a triangular shape at the bottom. So with your measuring tape, measure out the width of your base. For me, it's four. So follow the triangle down from the top 
until you get to the width of your base. Make sure that it's straight across. And you'll notice here, since half of my base is two, I align the two inches with a side seam of my bag so that it is central. You'll then draw a line across to measure the width of your base. And then pin along the line. You will repeat the same process on the other side of your bag. You can now see your lining taking shape. Before I sew, I'll make sure that the length of this base matches the length of the base of my crochet bag. So I'll measure from the top of the pin to the other top of the pin on the other side and it measures to 8 inches so I know I'm good to go. So then I will sew across that line on both sides. You can sew over this line twice for extra stability. At this point, I'm just reconfirming that my base matches 8 inches once I have sewn my lines. And then with the little triangle tabs at both sides, I'm just going to cut those off with my shears. And here we are, basically done. I'm just going to do one more tiny step before I attach the lining to the bag. Now see this little tiny part where I'm pointing to? I just want to reinforce that so it doesn't come undone. I don't think it will, but I just like to add another stitch over top of it just to make sure everything is all in place. If you do this, make sure not to exceed the line that you sewed for the base. Just focus on that little like half an inch of fabric that is the seam. Now that that's all done, we're going to start placing the lining inside of your crochet bag. So you're going to line the side seams to the side granny squares in the center. Once I get the lining situated, I will start on the opposite side from the slider. And you'll notice that it is aligned to the center of the side granny square. And then with these little end pieces, I'm just going to fold them under and then I'll just pin it into place once I get it to a spot that I like. This part can be a little bit tricky, but you just kind of got to work with it. Once I get that pinned, I'm going to start pinning around the side. So you're just going to pin the bag right underneath the coil of your zipper. And then I just make sure that seam on the back is lying flat as it can be. I kind of use that pin as a way to further flatten that seam. So you're just going to keep pinning along the top and then once you reach the other side with the slider, make sure that it aligns to the center of the other side granny square. You may have to play around with this a bit by opening closing your zipper, just changing it up until it fits correctly. So yeah, just play around with it until you get it to how you like. Um, once I have it so it's aligned to that side granny square into the center like that, I'll just pin it into place and I'll just pin right beside the slider on either side. Once you get that all good, just continue to pin the remaining of your bag.
I'm just color matching my thread so it matches my bag. Since we have yet to attach our strap, we're going to make sure not to sew too closely to the top because you'll need to be able to fit your crochet hook into the stitches at the top on the sides to attach your strap. The way I'll be sewing is having my yarn upwards and then the fabric and zipper downwards towards the bottom of my sewing machine. So I'm just following along the pins, making sure that I'm not sewing over the coil. Also keep in mind you still need to attach your strap so do not sew over the fifth row of single crochet because you're still going to need to be able to single crochet into the top row on both sides of your bag. Once I get to the ends of the zipper I will just use the hand wheel to carefully go over those parts just because it can be a little bit more tricky. You just want to be extra careful at that part in my opinion at least. It may even be easier for some people to just hand sew those parts or you can just hand sew the lining into the bag entirely and to do that I would recommend just using a back stitch. That might be the easier way to go. But here I am approaching the slider side of my bag so I'm just going to go really slow using the hand wheel over that and you just want to make sure you're not actually sewing over the slider part because that's like metal so your needle won't go through it so you just got to be careful there if you're doing it by machine. So here we are, once the lining has been fully attached, we're basically done now, just have to do the strap. So if we look closely at my stitching from when I attached my lining to the bag, you can see that the stitching doesn't exceed the top of my fifth row of single crochet, so that I can still put my crochet hook into the top row at the sides to attach my strap. So we're going to start on the end with the slider, but I'm just going to open my slider up because it just kind of gets in the way. So rotate your bag so that the side of your bag is facing towards you, and then you're going to find the center stitch. It should be placed roughly in between the two ends of your zipper. I'll be making my strap five single crochets wide, so I'm just going to count two stitches on either side of that center, and then the two stitches onto the right will be where I'm going to start. Sometimes I'll do six single crochet wide, so you can play around with that. I was running out of yarn for this, so I opted for five single crochet. So essentially we want our strap to be in the center of our side granny square, and then it will also match up with the ends of your zipper on either side. So I'm just going to make a slip knot and put that on my hook and then into that stitch that we established before as our starting stitch we're going to single crochet into it like this. And then I'm going to work four more single crochets across to have a total of five for the width of my strap. So you're going to chain one, turn your work, and then single crochet five across, and then you'll keep repeating that process until a length that you like. For me, I went until about 160 rows. You can change that depending on what you want. I was running out of yarn, so I had to just make it a regular shoulder bag, but you can make it longer so it can be a crossbody bag. And for me, that measured to about 32 inches, and then I'll show you what to do from there. I have a little method that I do to help reduce with stretching. It won't stop it completely, but it will significantly help. So yeah, be conscious of stretching when you're making your strap. Once you do the other section that helps with stretching, you still should expect about two to four inches for stretching with use. Once you get your strap to a length that you like, we're going to start to attach it to the other side. So bring your strap to the other side, make sure not to get it twisted. Note the side that my hook is on, this way I can attach to the outside of my bag. If your hook is on the opposite side, you'll have to attach into the inside, which doesn't really make a difference. I've done it both ways, but to follow along it might be easier if you have it in the same way. So either take out a row or add a row if your hook is on the opposite side. If not, let's continue. And if that was completely confusing, you'll see what I mean in a second. 
So bring the side towards you and then you're going to do the same thing that you did on the other side and find the center stitch and count two stitches to either side of that stitch to find out where you need to start attaching. This way your strap will be into the center of your side granny square and be aligned with the end of your zipper. So as you can see I started by putting my hook into that starting stitch. And this is going to be very similarly attached to the way that I showed attaching as you go. So you're just going to pull your loop through like this and then you're going to single crochet back into the first stitch of your strap. And then you're going to remove your loop and insert it into the next stitch on your bag. Pull that loop through and then you're going to single crochet back into the second stitch of your strap and you're just going to keep attaching like this until you get to the end of your strap so I'll just show that you could also use just a tapestry needle and whip stitch it to the bag So this is where we're at currently. We're not quite done yet. Just one more step to go and then you'll be done. So what I'm gonna do is I'm keeping my hook still attached. I'm not gonna fasten off or anything. So then I'm gonna slip stitch across the row that I just made while attaching to the bag. So we're just gonna slip stitch across. Yeah, and then I'm going to turn my work and slip stitch all the way across my strap to the other side. And then you would turn your work and then work all the way back down to the starting point. So you're slip stitching into each row, so keep your slip stitch consistent with the width of your row. You can adjust your hook side if need be, depending on your tension, but yeah, this will definitely help with stretching. Once you get back to the starting point, you're just going to slip stitch back into the first slip stitch that you made and then fasten off. And this is what the strap looks like up close and just weave in your ends and then you're done. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful and I would love to see the bags you guys make if you post them anywhere. So you can take me at alicia.creates on Instagram or TikTok or anywhere else I'd love to see. So thank you for watching.